Can we count connected components via inclusion exclusion? Well, to even make sense of that question, we've got to figure out what do I mean by connected components and what do I mean by inclusion exclusion? Let's tackle inclusion exclusion first. So here's a bunch of dots and I just want to count these dots. These dots represent elements in uh, some, some sets. So I've got a set X, which I'm uh, drawing as red dots. And I'll just put a circle around those, those red dots. Those are elements of my set X. I've got another set, a set Y, and I'll draw the elements of the set Y as uh, blue dots. Now there's also some dots in between here. These purple dots are uh, elements of both the set X and the set Y. Now what I want to do is count the number of elements in X union Y. So I'm going to write that as hashtag, that's the, the number of elements in the set X union Y. So the number of things that are in both of these sets. So to count the things that are in either X or Y, that's going to be equal to the number of things that are in X plus the number of things that are in Y, but I will have overcounted because I'm counting the stuff that's in both X and Y. I'm counting that stuff twice. So I've got to subtract off the number of things that are in both X and Y. I'm going to subtract off the number of the purple points so that I just count each dot once. And this is the whole idea that's referred to as inclusion exclusion. You know, it's a good exercise to try to work out what this means for say three sets that are intersecting. But even with these two sets, you can sort of see how the story goes, right? I want to count the number of things that are in either X or Y. And that's the number of things that are in X plus the number of things that are in Y. Take away the things that are in both so I avoid double counting. So this principle of inclusion exclusion is a way of counting uh, a number of things. So I want to use that counting principle to try to count the number of connected components. But to do that, we've got to figure out what do I mean by connected components? Well, here's the plane, it's R squared. And in the plane, I've got a subset, a subset X, which I'm drawing as these red blobs. Now the number of points in the set X is infinite. There's infinitely many points in these red blobs, but I'm not trying to count the number of points. I'm just trying to count the number of blobs, the number of connected components. And I'm going to write that as B sub zero of X. That will represent the number of these connected components. And I can count, I mean, visually in this case, I can count the number of pieces. There's one, two, three, <laughs> there's, there's three pieces, right? In this, uh, in this set X. So B sub zero of X is equal to three. So inclusion exclusion lets us count X union Y. If we can count X, count Y and count their intersection. And something we can try to count is the number of connected components. So let's apply this inclusion exclusion thinking to count the number of connected components. Well, here are some blobs. The, the red blobs, we'll call those X. The blue blobs, we'll call those Y. And the intersection of X and Y, that will draw in purple. So we want to count the number of connected components of X union Y, the, the number of pieces when we just view all these blobs together. So let's suppose that the number of connected components, B sub zero, satisfies inclusion exclusion. So I want to suppose that we've got a formula like this, that B sub zero of the union is B sub zero of X plus B sub zero of Y, and then we'll subtract off the, the double count, uh, the number of components of the intersection. So let's make a copy of that formula so we can work on it here. And if we just look at X by itself, there are three pieces, three connected components. Let's put Y back into the picture. And now just looking at Y by itself, there are four pieces, four connected components. Let's put X back into the picture. And now let's look at the intersection of X and Y. There are five pieces in X intersect Y. So we do some arithmetic, uh, three plus four minus five, that is two. And sure enough, if we look at X union Y, looking at all the pieces together, we count that there are indeed two pieces. Well, if a single example were enough for a proof, we'd be done. But a single example doesn't prove something. So to try to get a better feeling for what's going on here, let's work out another example of inclusion exclusion and counting the number of connected components. So here's the same setup, but with uh, different, different shapes, different blobs, right? And again, the red blobs, I'm gonna call those X, and again, we'll call the blue blobs Y, and the intersection of X and Y, we're again gonna draw in purple. And I wanna apply inclusion exclusion to this new situation. So I've got that same additivity formula for B sub zero. I've got that inclusion exclusion formula for counting connected components. And I'm gonna again make a copy of that formula so I can do the computation. 
Now, just looking at x by itself, there are two pieces. Let's put y back into the picture. And just looking at y by itself, there are also two pieces. So let's put x back into the picture. Now, let's look at the intersection of x and y. I'm going to look at x intersect y. There are four pieces. The intersection of x and y has four connected components. And now I am getting worried. The, uh, the arithmetic here uh, is 2 plus 2 minus 4 is 0. But looking at x union y, looking at all the blobs together, we do have one connected component. So inclusion exclusion has, has failed. The number of components of the union is not the number of components of x plus the number of components of y minus the number of components of the intersection. But what is going on here? Why is this basic principle of counting, inclusion exclusion, failing when we try to count the number of connected components? When we think about the example of when it failed, uh, you know, here's that example again, and we've got one connected component at the end, but we've also got a hole right in the middle. And if you want, you can think of the failure of B0 to be additive, the failure of the counting connected components to satisfy inclusion-exclusion. That failure could be measured by B1. B1 would count the number of these holes. Now, the B1 count, the number of these holes, would also not satisfy inclusion-exclusion, but its failure could be measured by something else, B2, which would count the number of, of two-dimensional holes, and, and so on, right? B2 would not exactly satisfy inclusion-exclusion, but its failure would be measured by something called B3 that would measure the number of three-dimensional holes, and, and so on, and so on, and so on. And what, what the experts will recognize here is that these B0, B1, B2, these are the Betty numbers, and what we're really talking about is homology and Meyer Viatoris. And I think what's remarkable is that uh, you know throughout mathematics, even very deep mathematics casts its shadow on objects that are just eminently accessible to absolutely everyone.